Hey everybody, it's Tracy from Science Buddies. Welcome to our hands-on coding tutorial on K-Nearest Neighbors, often abbreviated as KNN. The KNN model that we will be creating today will train itself to recognize the difference between benign and malignant breast tumor cells. We will start off with showing you how to use Google Cool Lab. Then we will step through each of the stages of implementing the KNN algorithm together. In this project, we will be using a dataset of breast cancer cells to create a KNN model that can classify each sample as either malignant or benign. Google Colab is a platform that allows you to run, write, and share code. You can run each cell by either clicking on this play button here, or by clicking on the cell and pressing Control enter or Command enter if you're on a MacBook. You can tell a cell has been run when you see the output here, or by this green check mark here. You can add cells by clicking on the button on the upper left over here and delete it by clicking on this trash icon to the right of each cell. If you accidentally delete a cell, you can undo it by pressing Ctrl M Z on your keyboard. We'll first start by importing the libraries that we'll need for this project. To do so, you just need to run this cell. Then we'll load the dataset into the notebook. To do so, you can also just run this cell as so. We can check what the dataset looks like by using the head function. We can see that we have 32 features here with the names on the top like ID, diagnosis, radius mean, texture mean, parameter mean, and so on. For a more in-depth explanation of each of these features, check out the project information in the description below. Next, we'll start pre-processing the dataset or getting the data ready for training. You can read more about why we need to pre-process our dataset in the project instructions. We'll start off by dropping features, and here we'll be dropping the ID column. As we can see here, the ID column simply serves as a unique identifier for each row and doesn't serve any meaningful information for the analysis or modeling, so we can drop it. To drop this feature, all you have to do is run this cell. Next, we will normalize the features since KNN is a distance-based algorithm, and scaling it ensures that no particular feature outweighs the other. We will be normalizing our other numerical features, which are specified in the project instructions. Add the feature names to this list, then run this code cell. You can now see that after checking what our data frame looks like, all the features that we have specified here are now between the values of 0 and 1. Now we will encode our categorical features since many machine learning algorithms including KNN are designed to operate on numerical data. We will be encoding the diagnosis feature. We can see the different values for diagnosis here by using the unique function. We can see that there are two different values for diagnosis, which are M and B. M meaning a tumor is malignant and B meaning a tumor is benign. We can just run this code to encode this feature. Now we can see that the values for diagnosis have changed from 0 to 1 instead of malignant and benign. We will now split our data into training and testing datasets. In our case, we will be using the other features to classify if a tumor is malignant or benign. That is why we dropped the diagnosis column from the x value and assigned the diagnosis column to the y value as so. We can see what x and y look like by simply using the print function. Here's the code for splitting the dataset into training and testing. With a test size of 0.2, that means 20% of the dataset will be used for testing and the rest will be used for training. We can check the shapes of the datasets as so. This means the number of features in the dataset and this means the number of rows that are in the dataset. Finally, we are ready to train the model. All you need to do for this section is to run the code. We can see the accuracy of the model here, and we can see that this model is roughly 96% accurate, with precision and recall following closely at 95% and 95%. We will be graphing the model using PCA, which is a method that simplifies complex data, considering that we have multiple features that we are predicting our model on. To create this graph, all you need to do is run this code. This graph shows the decision boundary between the two classes that we are classifying, which is malignant and benign for the diagnosis feature. The dots are the actual values of the class, and the background is what the model would predict if a new dot were to be placed in that region. We can see that the model correctly identifies most of the dots within its boundary, but occasionally we can see that there is an orange dot in the blue region and vice versa. 
We can try to find the ideal value of k to pick by running this loop that compares the values of k to one another. All you need to do for this section is to run these two cells of code. For what value of k does the model have the highest accuracy, precision, and recall? Additionally, you can experiment with using a variation of k and n called weighted k and n. For this section, you can pick a value of k, then run these two cells. Try to find a k value that has the best accuracy, precision, and recall. And why do you think some k values are better than others? With that, we come to the end of this coding tutorial. Remember that you can find written instructions and example code for this project linked in the video description. For over a thousand other projects for all areas of science and engineering, visit our website www.sciencebuddies.org.